this, getting uh, like this, you not get it. Manebar Jitendra Singh Ji. Get fun, not the time. <laughs> Thank you, Chairperson, ma'am. At the outset, I have to thank the honorable members who have given very useful inputs. Mr. Sujit Kumar, Mr. Ayodhya, Ravi Reddy Allah, Garo, Mr. Kanaka Medala, Ravindra Kumar, Thodi, Mr. Vijay Sai Reddy, J.K. Vasanji, and uh, our very learner, Sri Thambi Dorai Ji. I, I think uh, those who are not present in the house today have actually deprived themselves of a very important discussion. This is a bill which is going to have a long-term effect, long-term outcomes, and all of us, each citizen of India, including those sitting on the other side, are going to be stakeholders. To that extent, this is possibly history in making. When history happens, we don't realize. When it is written, we realize that we were part of it. And uh, now, ironically, destiny leaves it to us, the choice whether to make ourselves part of the history or not. Those who have not, I hope, will not one day repent that they were not here in this house because we were actually, and the government was looking forward to have more constructive inputs from them as well. Uh, most of the points saliently have been raised. The house is not in a mood for a very long discussion. And as has been rightly mentioned, ever since Prime Minister Modi took over in 2014, he has, one after the other, taken a number of path-breaking decisions, broken several taboos of the past in order to liberate India of those self-made barriers so that we could have a global role. And if we envisage for ourselves the Amrit Kal next 25 years, obviously we have to live up to global parameters and that is possible only if we have the same level of competitiveness as other countries. Just to cite a few, it was Prime Minister Modi who unlocked the space department. Today you have Chandrayaan, you have 150 startups from the private sector, which was hardly imaginable till about five, seven years ago. And that has also increased our resource pool, both knowledge-wise as well as finance funding. Similarly, our atomic energy, we were constrained of funds. It was Prime Minister Modi. In a decision in 2014, he amended the Atomic Energy Act and allowed it for joint funding and joint ventures. Today, we have an atomic energy plant coming up nearby in Haryana and Gorakhpur, which was already confined to only three, four states. Similarly, from the ramparts of Red Fort, he spoke about Startup India, Startup India, and made us realize that, we, that, they, that Rose Guard does not necessarily mean Sarkari Naukri and helped us come out of that mindset. From just 350 startups, today we are more than one lakh. It was Prime Minister Modi who made us realize the importance of biotechnology in the 21st century world. And just imagine India, which hardly had the aptitude and culture of preventive health care, gave world the first ever vaccine for COVID. And today, from just 50 startups in biotechnology in 2014, we are up to 6,000. 6, so new avenues of livelihood, new avenues. And therefore, to that extent, in a single sentence, I can say this Anusandhan Act, which is coming into being from today, will pave the way and will define the face and stature of India at 2047. Because this will place us in that select league of developed nations. I will not go much into detail, but just to respond to a few points, I am also glad that so much is the requirement of this new provision and so much of unanimity that it was heartening to see Mr. Kanaka Medola and uh, Mr. Vijay Sai Reddy on the same page. So I think one of the biggest contributions of this bill today is that he has brought two, two warring horses from Andhra on the same page. Yes, yes, that is what he said. So, that is what he said. I think this should be researched. <laughs> and I, I'm sure for a, for a research scholar like Mr. Thambi Rai, it will take another five years to conduct a research on this. But nevertheless, as was being said, 
by Mr. Ravinder Kumar. There is no ambiguity. Actually, the rules are yet to be framed. When the rules are framed, everything will be in order. In fact, the Act has envisaged every good thing which is possible, even in the other role models. We have a research society in America. We have a research society in some of the European countries. We are among the first few. And in fact, when it is put into place, I am sure it is going to be better than most of them because we have thoroughly studied for about two, three years, repeated representations, repeated presentations, repeated uh, brainstorming on this. Mr. Uh, Vijay Sai Reddy rightly mentioned the accountability check. If you go through the details of the bill, you will find that the Executive Council will also mandated not only to monitor the progress of the different projects, but also to analyze the accountability of the funding at different level stages. To begin with, when the funding is decided for a project, whether it is required, how much is it justified, and then from stage to stage, how best it is being put to use for which it was uh, meant. And uh, as he rightly mentioned that the R&D spending was very low in this country, this is one of the important issues which is going to be addressed by this bill. We are going to have a budget of 50,000 crore for five years, out of which 36,000 crore, almost 80 percent is going to come from the non-government sources, from industry, from philanthropists, even from domestic as well as outside sources, which is not difficult because it comes to about 72,000, uh, uh, 7,200 per year. And even if we have our 14,000 share, we can enter into a, some kind of an equity or a PPP model. So there is a huge, huge, because I personally also believe that in, in case we have to grow beyond this, where we have today arrived with the patronage offered by Prime Minister Modi in the last nine years, we have to then do away with the demarcation between the private and the public sector. We have to have a very holistic approach. We have to give up silos. We have to have an integrated supplementation of the best avenues that each one of us have. And in order to achieve that, we have to also make the industry stakeholder right from the beginning. And that, I think, is precisely one of the... At the same time, keeping in mind the ethos and our ancient heritage, the Executive Council also has room for representation from social sciences, from humanities, so that we do not miss out while we move in the world arena, we do not miss out our Bharat. So I think this is a bill which is going to be a turning point. And yes, another point which was very relevantly raised by uh, Mr. Uh, you rightly mentioned, colleges, universities. This is another issue being addressed. It has been very consciously because, as I said, we studied about three years to work on this bill. And you are right. The earlier board, which is now going to be non-existent after this bill comes, after that I'm going to conclude, the Science and Engineering Research Board, SERB. That was a board which was offering funds or funding support or financial support on the basis of competitiveness, which is very open, fair, objective. As a result of which, almost 65 percent of funding went to IITs and the most technically developed institutions, whereas the state universities hardly got a share of 10 to 15 percent of the entire funds. Whereas I agree with you, most of the researchers, most of the students, scholars are there in the universities. And therefore, at the time of introduction, when somebody said, that this bill may not be compatible with the spirit of cooperative federalism, I had to correct them to tell them that, in fact, we are supplementing the state universities' resources. So that is one issue which is being taken care of because the bill envisages that we will have a separate competition within the state universities. So separate allocation exclusively for them so that they are not expected to compete with the higher institutions and thereby suffer a disadvantage. So I think to sum up, because uh, this is today not the right mood to, for a long discussion, so one should stop before one asks to stop. <laughs> we have a governing body headed by the Prime Minister, and we have an executive council, which will be headed by the pri uh, principal scientific advisor. But we have a huge lot of uh, conglomeration of uh, representation from industry, from academics, and uh, I think it will be 
it will be so evenly balanced that uh, we will not deprive ourselves from the best of everything else. And therefore, this Anusandhan Act, uh, Anusandhan National uh, Research Foundation Bill, when I humbly request for uh, unanimous passage, I also would uh, take pride in saying that this is happening at a time when we are the members, and this should have happened several years ago. I rightly agree with members. Maybe destiny wanted that Shri Modi ji should be the Prime Minister and we should be the members of the House when this historic destined thing happens. Thank you very much. Thank you. The question is that the Anusandha National Research Foundation Bill 2023, as passed by Lok Sabha, be taken into consideration. Those in favour of will please say aye. 